So I've worked in the church um, for about 30 years, and um, five years ago my father got sick, he is a businessman, and he died and I inherited his business, so I employ about 280 people in a business context, and I lead a church. And um, so I've been in the church a long time, so when I go to the church I'm like a father in the church now, but when I go to the business I'm like a son, because I never paid for the business, I inherited the business. And when I go in there, there are 280 people that report to me, and uh, the church made me exhausted. And I've done 300 weddings and 300 funerals and marriage counseling, and, but this far more represents the Bible than this does. Because the Bible says we are sons and daughters and we will inherit from our fathers. Say receive. receive. So we're not actually meant to achieve Christianity, we're meant to receive Christianity. And so I want to share with you a little bit about that journey of what it means when I drive into the church and what it means when I drive into my business and the things that God has taught me along that way. Say son. son. And I believe the most important word in the whole Bible is the word son and not daughter. And I'm not being sexist. In the new Bibles they're printing today, they say sons and daughters. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says sons because the Bible is against the culture. So when the culture says women don't get inheritances, the Bible says you're a son of God, man. And so I'm not being sexist by calling you a son. I'm just telling you that culturally when you're with Jesus, you get an inheritance. Whatever culture you're in, you get an inheritance, whether you're a man or a woman. So when I say son of God, I'm talking to you two ladies. I believe it's the number one word in the whole Bible. This is what it says. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to that? No, 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 no. I get like a phone. I don't feel you're the in said. I don't know what it means. But, but I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to that? The only way to the Father is through the Son. So the destination of Christianity is a Father, not heaven. The destination of Christianity is a Father, not heaven. So, so what we do here in South Africa in the English language, son, and, and, and it happened in the Afrikaans, you say, what is your name? They say, my name is David Andre Milan. <coughs> Die sister. <laughs> what is your pastor name? David Andre Milan. Die fiefde. <laughs> and your opa? Die vierde. Because you get your name from your dad. You get your identity from your dad. That's what gets passed down in the Afrikaans culture. In the English culture, exactly the same. Robertson, Jackson, Davidson. What's your name? Robinson. Ah, oh, you Robinson. What's your name? Davidson. Ah, oh, you Davidson. You would get your identity from your dad. In the Bible, it's exactly the same. Bar is son. So Bar Timaeus, son of Timaeus. Bartholomew. Son of Tholomew. What is Abba in the Bible? Father. So Bar Abba is the son of the father. So they put two people in front of the crowd. Bar Abba, Barabbas, son of the father. And Jesus, the true son of the father, they shouted for who? They shout for the wrong son, get to the wrong father, no solution upon the earth. Shout for the right son, get to the right father, and we start to change the world. Does that make sense to you, friends? And so I want to speak to you about the importance of being a son. So don't, don't turn with your Bibles because they can just sit in the Bible for you a little psalm to bring me. But what they give us, this is a, a list in Luke chapter 3 of what not to call your children. So I'll read it to you. The son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Zerig, the son of Ruah, the son of Peleg, the son of Eva, the son of Sheila. Hello, mate. What's your dad's name, mate? Sheila, mate. The son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad. That's the guy who invented antibiotics. The son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mehadil, the son of Kenan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Say son of Adam. Son of Adam. The son of God. Son of Adam. Son of God. So right in the beginning of the Bible, we've got different ways of reading the Bible. In Pretoria, 
if you've grown up in an Afrikaans tradition, we read the Bible like this. Creation, the fall, redemption, restoration. That's how reformed people read the Bible. There was creation, the fall, redemption, restoration. And it's a beautiful way of reading the Bible. It's the way that most of us read the Bible. If you look at the last verse of Genesis, anybody tell me the last verse of Genesis? It says this, they buried him in a coffin in Egypt. So the Bible starts in a garden, and man wants to rule himself, and it ends in a coffin, the book of Genesis. And all the way through the Bible, we see the garden and the coffin. When Jesus is there, there's garden. When we live our own ways, there's coffin. So in a 5K radius of this venue, there are dead marriages, dead dreams, dead sexuality, dead conversations, dead businesses. But when Jesus came, he pulled everybody out the coffin. To do that coffin, get up and you open coffins. So the, another way of reading the Bible is through the resurrection. That wherever Jesus goes, life gets resurrected. Amen. 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 Another way of reading the Bible is through authority. Like people like John Wimber and, and, and the Vineyard Movement. They started to preach the kingdom. That God gave authority to man. The authority was lost. Jesus came through David and all the kings. And he took the kingdom back. And so we start to declare kingdom authority into our businesses. We start to declare the kingdom has come. Thine is the kingdom. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. As it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. And, and that's one of the ways we read the Bible, which is all awesome. I'm just going to show you a different way to read the Bible today. And I'm, I think all of those are right. But I'm going to show you a way to read it as a son. So the Bible says in the beginning, Adam was the son of God. So the way God wanted to reveal himself right in the beginning was as a father. But Adam messed it up. So he gives Israel a second chance in Exodus 4. He says, Israel is my firstborn son. So he says, I'm trying to show myself to the world as a father. And, and so I'm going to give you a second chance. And Israel messed it up. And so then he says to Solomon, Solomon is my firstborn son. Give it another chance. And he messes it up. And so he ends the whole of the Old Testament with this verse, I will turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers, lest I strike the earth with a curse. So the Old Testament opens up with the father trying to reveal himself, and it closes with the father trying to reveal himself. And he waits, I believe, for 400 years. The last thing he said, I'm waiting for fathers and sons to work together. Please don't kick out, ladies. He's talking about you too. And for 400 years, he's silent. Waiting for any father and any son to work together. And no father and son work together. So he breaks that silence. Says there's a voice from heaven. Say voice from heaven. That says, this is my son. Whom I love. With him I am well pleased. So that's how the New Testament starts. It starts with son. And this is how the New Testament ends. In, Re in, in Revelation it says, to those who overcome, I will call you sons of God. So it starts with the son, he messes it up. He gives Israel a second chance, they mess it up. He gives Solomon a third chance, they mess it up. He closes with Malachi, 400 years of silence. And he says, I will show you what a father and son looks like working together. So I am a church leader and I am a businessman, but I don't get my identity of either of those things because the most important identity I need to know is that I'm a son of God with a father in heaven and I've been given authority to operate on earth. Amen? Amen? And I have an unfair advantage. I have an unfair advantage because I have access to him. And so friends, it's very easy when you meet someone. The first thing you say, what do you do? What work do you do? And I just keep telling people, I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. I don't want the labels of the world. Businessman or leader of a church. I want what God named me. Son of God. So the first title that you get when you get born, whether you get born illegitimately with inmates, as you come out of the womb, the Bible says you're a son of somebody or a daughter of somebody. That's the first title you get. The Bible says first the natural, then the spiritual. When you get born again, the first title you get is also son of God. But most people don't work like that. And so they act in a kind of an orphan beggar spirit instead of living in the fullness of the inheritance that God has called us to. Are you with me? Yeah. Mark X sin. Yeah. So I want to read with you six things, friends, and then we're going to... How are we going? All right, now, eh? Good. I'm going to say, I'm going to buy 90 to cents. Romans chapter 8. I want to show you what it means to be a son of God on this earth. 
For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to God's love. Verse one, one verse before. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. Romans 8 verse 13. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Say sons of God. Sons of God. God is very clever. My, my dad's got this business and it's got these storerooms in the back. These massive storerooms where all our stock is kept. Because we've got the busiest, we've got petrol station, we've got the busiest convenience store in South Africa. So our storerooms are massive. These massive storerooms. And one day the manager said to me, let me show you what your dad's just done. And as I walked into the storerooms, I thought, the customers must stay that side and pay. But I'm a son, I'm allowed to come into the storeroom. And as I walked into that storeroom and I looked at all these chocolates and Cokes and cookies and I sat there and I thought, this belongs to my dad. And I'm a son led by the Spirit of God. And, 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 and when you don't have any words left to speak to your wife, then you must exercise your authority to go into the storeroom of your father and you must wait there until he fills you up with words so when you come home you can bless your wife with your words. Amen. Amen. Amen? And when you don't have any more business ideas, you don't have to go to an MBA, you just have to go to the storeroom and say, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. you will give us enough ideas to change this world. We are sons of God, gentlemen and ladies. We are sons of God. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive, so I did not receive, a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. How many of you right now as South Africans are living in fear? Fear of the future, fear for your children, fear for your finances. How many of you are living in fear? Well, why don't you stand? Be honest. Exile Psalm Mandela. Be honest and stand. Can we say, without exaggerating, 70%? Of a Christian breakfast, and the first sign of sonship is not to have fear, but 70% of us are standing. And so the theology that we have to learn is not like dig down deep. The theology we have to learn is we don't receive fear, we receive sonship. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want to say this to you, do not be afraid. You can be seated, please. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. Say the spirit of sonship. Spirit of sonship. Or adoption. And by him we cry, Abba Father. We cry. If yet he's only kerk, ek weet nie waar jylle in die Bible gelees het, maar as baie stilte in die kerk. I, I saw God the other day. He, he cried, Abba Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit. Say big S. Big S. Speaks to small S. Speaks to small S. Say big S. Big S. Speaks to small S. Speaks to small S. Drat klein S is so. Say big S. Big S. Speaks to small S. The Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children then we are heirs. Say heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs of Christ, if indeed we share in His sufferings, in order that we will also share in His glory. Friends, I want to share with you six things that I've learned as I've led a church and led a business. The first one is this. As a son, I need courage. And I cannot receive the spirit of fear. I can't watch the news. That can't determine. I, I, had, I was part of an apostolic movement and I could have moved anywhere. I was English. I could have gone to England. I could have gone to Canada. I could have gone to Australia. And I could have been a church there. And I could have praised the Lord and said, Hallelujah. And God said this to me. It was safer for Daniel to be in the lion's den because God wanted him there than in the stadium. Because he was in the will of God. And I can live in the lion's den with this government and this economy at this time. I can lead a church and a business and I'm not scared. Amen. 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 Say receive. receive. I do not receive fear. I, I, receive, fear. Receive, I receive sonship. My father, I was at boarding school in, 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 a, in a school in Natal, the most expensive school in the country called Hilton College. And um, I was in Standard 8 and the road, my, my dad owns a business called Montrose, which is a Shell petrol station on the highway. And the road bypassed us and went behind us. And I'm at the school in Standard 8. 
And I saw my dad come out of my headmaster's office and I walked up to him. I said, Dad, what are you doing here? He said, son, I've gone bankrupt. He's an unsaved man, but he said, I'll take call Brukhadra. He said, I've made a plan for you to finish school. Now, you know, when you're in standard eight, it's a major blow, eh? And he, and he reapplied for the license and they turned him down. So he reapplied for the license and they turned him down. So he reapplied for the license and they turned him down. So he reapplied for the license and they turned him down. So he reapplied for the license and they turned him down. So he reapplied for the license and they turned him down. So he reapplied for the license and they turned him down. So he reapplied for the license and they turned him down. So he reapplied for the license and they turned him down. 18 times. 18 times. Got in his car in the free state, drove to Pretoria, applied, and they said to him, Mr. Dyer, when will you give up? He said, Dyer's never give up. If my father, though he is evil, knows how to give good gifts to his children, how much more? Say how much more. How much more, my father in heaven? Don't give up, sons of God. Don't give up. If my father didn't give up after 18, I want to tell you, my father in heaven will never give up. I do not receive the spirit of fear. It is not a raw raw. It is just I receive the spirit of courage. I did my father's funeral. I played rugby with a man who's probably the best rugby. His brother went on to become a springbuck. I played rugby with him. When we were matric, his dad went bankrupt. Two years after my dad went bankrupt. I did my father's funeral. This beast of a man, bigger than me, walked up to me. He was crying. He said to me, Rory, do you know that when we were in matric, my dad went bankrupt? I said, yes, I do know that. He said, do you know somebody finished paying my school fees? I said, well, obviously somebody did. He said, nobody knows this, but your father finished paying for my school fees. Wow. Earthly, unsaved father. Providing an inheritance for my friend's futures. How much more? Say how much more. My father in heaven. Do not be afraid, sons and daughters of God. He's got our businesses. The Bible says this in John chapter 10. The Father is greater than all. And nobody can snatch us from the Father's hand. He's greater than all. South Africa, economies, Ramaphosa, Julius Malema. He's greater than all and no one can snatch us from his hands. The second thing he received, it says he received the spirit of sonship. Adoption. Say adoption. adoption. That means my name changed. I walk into that business and I'm a dyer. I'm Ian Dyer's son and because of that I have authority. At my father's funeral, one of the uh, oil company's directors walked up to me and said, you will never get the license changed from your father's name into your name. Never. Say this with me. Never belongs to Jesus. I tried all my contacts. I tried all my dad's friends. I tried everything. I needed favor with the Department of Energy. And I needed favor with some lawyer here who drives a Rolls Royce. I've got a book called Lawyers and Other Despicable Creatures. <laughs> Sorry, Johanna, I apologize. I apologize. Yaman, my mother. Yaman, yaman, yaman. I live in grace, not the law. But anyway, keep practicing and tithing and all that stuff. And then when you get to heaven, we talk again, okay? So I tried everything. And I didn't understand. And one day I read this thing. I have received the spirit of sonship. I have received adoption. I carry my dad's name. So I got on my knees and I prayed this. Close your eyes with me. Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, who art in hallowed, be your name. hallowed be your name. Say it with me again. Our Father, Our Father who, art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. I prayed that in my study. I got on my knees and I said, God, I can't make this work. The next minute I went to a global rugby festival <laughs> sponsored by the Department of Mineral and Energy. And the director general's son and my son played in the same rugby team. And I walked up to her and I said, ma'am, I need help. She said, I'll help you with pleasure. And then I sit before this lawyer with the Rolls Royce and he comes in and he dumps his stuff on the table. Boom. His buttons are undone. I think he's a lawyer that's bad enough. <laughs> Sorry, Johan. <laughs> and all your partners who have sponsored this event. Ja, man all die vernoten van die. En hij dumpt het dan en hij zegt: I heard one of you is a preacher. En I think, oh, freak, an unsaved boy. I mean, I should have known most of them are unsaved, but anyway. That, that's, that's another whole story. <laughs> So 
So my heart dropped. I thought, oh no, he's an atheist. He said, my parents were missionaries. I, I, I like um, Christians. And then he said, aren't you a speaker? So I got an accountant. I, I said, yes. He said, you like speak at schools? I said, yes. He said, you do you like speech days? I said, yes. He said, you did the speech day at Woodhill College? I said, yes. He said, you spoke about your dad on the side of the field shouting for you? I said, yes. He said, was that the dad who owns this company? I said, yeah. He said, are you trying to get this license? I said, yeah. He said, hey, I'd love to help you. <laughs> Say this with me. Our Father, Our Father who, art who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Be your name. <laughs> I'm not a good businessman. I'm not even a good church leader. But I ask God every day, I get on my knees and I say, Our Father who art in heaven, I'm going to exercise my right as an adopted son for you to speak to me. And he gives me enough ideas to build the church and enough ideas to build the business. Amen? Amen. Are you with me? So that, that, how we go? It's like a sense of that. The third thing, so number one is security. Number two is authority. Number three is intimacy. Say intimacy. Oh, the ding by the Afrikaners, the meeste geniet. Ek sien jylle daar by ons kerk. Hi, how are you? Fine, and you? How's everything? Fine. I can't see past anything. So God sent a wild Englishman into the Pretoria East. To love people enough to open their hearts. Because God desires intimacy. Intimacy means into me you see. And ons is te bang om te wees dat ons swaar kry. Where I believe God is going to build churches where we're intimate enough to be honest with Abba Father. Amen? Amen. I was very sick. Uh, 18 months ago, I was lying on my sick bed. And uh, we've got all different hierarchies here in Pretoria. We have church hierarchies, we have business hierarchies, we have estate hierarchies. We play a of boardwalk. <laughs> we've got a whole lot of hierarchies that happen in these places. But we've got a man in our church, his name is Francois, Afrikaans man. And his, his nephew is the captain of the Proteus cricket team, and his brother leads the church. And every time they introduce Francois, they introduce him as Fuff's uncle or Vessi's brother. <laughs> That's how he gets introduced. And I spent nearly three months lying in bed last year. I was so sick, I thought I was going to die. And one day I was weeping before God. As I stood up, I'd get dizzy. I wrote down in my diary, Father in heaven, will I ever preach again? Is my preaching come to an end? What must I do? And I got an SMS that afternoon. Hello, Pastor. This is Frans van wat praat. Pastor, ek bid vir jou elke ochtend. Is sê, die Heer het vir my gepraat van Habakkuk. Hoofdstuk 3. As die drijven nie oos nie en as mis oos in die land sal ek jou nog soos een ribbok op die hoog plekke laat staan. En hy sê, I don't know what this means, pastor, but I've been praying for you and this is what I feel for you. 23 years ago, the first time I ever preached, I preached from Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 19. And when you're intimate with God, it doesn't matter if you're the captain of the cricket team or you lead a church. If you're intimate with God, He will speak to you. And He will give you the scriptures that you need to change your world and to change the world of other people. Amen. Say, Abba, Father. Into me you see. Why is that music playing? Does it mean I'm meant to stop? How long have I got? Five minutes. Is that it? How long have we going for? 25 already? That music's making me funny. <laughs> the Spirit testifies with my spirit. Say spirit. spirit. Testifies with my spirit. We, we've had a revival of dwip in our church. So we baptize the guy, and the man walks up to me and says, Jy doop verkeer, 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 verkeerd. I said, I beg your pardon? He said, Jy doop verkeerd. 
So I said, my name is Rory. <laughs> They said, yeah, do it for Kirt. I said, why don't you just take a step back and say, this is my name. I've been in the church a long time. I don't think you're doing it properly. He says, can I get noch iets say? I said, what? He said, you preek slag. As he turned and walked away, the Spirit testified with my spirit that I'm the Son of God. Amen. Otherwise, friends, we are going to become bitter and twisted and, and we, are going to take, we are going to take revenge on people and we're going to harbor grudges at people. Even in this room today, you've got stuff inside of your heart that you've carried for years because you let the little s speak to the little s instead of the big s speaking to the little s. The Spirit testifies with my spirit that I'm a son of God. The guy comes to me and says, you're ADHD. I'm a son of God. I might be ADHD, but I'm a son of God. Amen? Amen. Number five. I'll, I'll finish in time. Inheritance. Say inheritance. Yes. When my dad died, he had a Land Cruiser. Vit VX. 1800 Ks. In Pretoria, it is the pinnacle of idolatry. <laughs> So a clang, so a vitty, so a pearl white one. <laughs> My sister is 52 kgs. I'm 75. <laughs> <laughs> when I last weighed myself, it's in at eight. It's 52 kgs. She's like this. She, say so a clang. She won't even see over the thing. So my dad dies and I say to her, surely the Land Cruiser comes to me. And in my dad's will, it says this. The Land Cruiser gets left to my daughter, comma, so when she drives at night, she's safe. Sorted. The whole of the Old Testament can be described in this piece of paper. God said, I will give you from the river to the river, from the mountains to the dry ground. That's what God said, I'll give you. And all the wars in the whole Bible is David fighting for this piece of ground. And when David had finished fighting these wars... Israel lived in about two-thirds of their inheritance. And then Solomon started to sin. The Son of God started to sin. And, 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 and the enemy came and the Gergesites and the Meshabites and the Thisagites and those guys and these oaks and those guys. And, and now Israel lives in 10% of the land that God promised them. How much percent do you live in? Take a guess. 10%. 10%? How much percent do you live in? Um, physically. Just 1%. 1%. 1%. How much percent do you live in, ma'am? 20. 20. How much percent do you live in, sir? 5. We are sons of God. Jesus is the new David. He bought us an inheritance. He paid for it with His blood. Peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness, confidence. And you and I have got to live in this because the devil will come. He comes at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon for tea. His name is Bitterness. He stays for tea. He stays for supper. He spends a night and before you know it, he's taken a little piece of what God bought for you. He's taken it away. I've been in the church for 25, 30 years. Most Christians live in about 20% of what God called them to do. And we close with this, friends. Suffering. Say suffering. suffering. The presence of suffering does not mean the absence of God. The presence of suffering does not mean the absence of God. My wife's father was murdered by a black man. And I come into Pretoria and racism was started here. And people say, you do not know, not know what they've done to me. And my wife says, you do not know what they did to me. There's water from heaven and there's water from earth. It says this in Hebrews chapter 5. Although he was a son, he learned obedience by what he suffered and became the source of eternal encouragement. When we suffer, we start to dig a hole. And when we dig the hole, we hit water. And when we hit that water, it's to, earth, to fill the earth. And friends, your suffering now is not being wasted. It's not God denying you. It's not God leaving you. It's God giving you the ability to dig deep so that you can hit some water because this country desperately needs it. Number one, security. Number two, authority. Number three, intimacy. Number four, that testifies assurance in my heart. Number five, inheritance. Number six, suffering. If we do that as sons of God, we'll change this nation. Whether we're businessmen or church leaders or parents or grandparents I want to tell you, just say this with me, our Father, our Father who art in heaven hallowed be your name that is the answer to this whole nation right now in Jesus name, Amen, Amen.